right, so now I'm ready to reassemble. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this a good spray down. Some silicon oil. Yeah, so this was quite tough to get out of there, and this is unfortunate. I did call it there, but unfortunately, there seems to be, I don't really know a better way to do it. Um, so that's got some nice. So we just want this to bite, and we're going to count it in. Eight. So that's, I must count it, but anyway, so that kind of. So normally what you find with these is that on other guns, they don't just come to a stop where they started. So that's why it's always good to count, but I'd say that's where it should be. Okay, I'm not going to over tighten that because, you know, when it comes to, if it ever comes to servicing again, I don't want, I can actually just, I can blue that again. So not a train smash. All right. So that's that part done. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want to put the valve back into the uh, frame. So this is just going to, what I'll do is I'm just going to spray some silicon in there. And I'm just going to just try and find that, so that we push it all the way in. All right, so it's in just like that. So if you guys, just so you guys know, this, these two here, these two big things, those are for the plane and inside this big receiver. All right. Okay. So next thing is. It's not a, but what is key to find out is we're going to need to check that, these pla that everything lines up here. So um, let's just check this plate. Or you start reassembling everything, you just want to make sure the plates fit. So you can see that, so I've gone screwed it in too much. So let's just have a look. Yeah. So by checking that, so just to flip it back over one more time. Okay, just like that. Let's check if this plates line up here. Make sure all the holes line up. And what I think we're going to do is we're actually going to screw, just temporarily, we're going to do this real quick. We're just going to temporarily screw. So then we've just temporarily done the plates on that side. And we're going to just test with the plate on this side. So that looks good. Okay. So we're going to come back to the plate on the other side. Next thing we've got to do here, that's quite important, is we've got to put this little block back in. All right. So there's a groove on here that goes on the inside. So this will, and there's a little threaded part here. So we just want to drop this in. And we want to move this all the way. Now this is very important that we get this right because if you don't get it right then this will sit open and you're going to get blast of air coming back at you so now what we'll do is we're going to get this guy out and we're going to screw this guy out. these two we'll have made them up again and then we can once we got this thing we can adjust it so we will I want to make sure that when this is reconnected that um, it's going to pull everything closed. So the only way to do that is to check it quick. And there is a piece in here that you got to just, this little piece here, part of the cocking lever, right? So we have to make sure that this goes on. It sometimes pops off when you're doing, when you can reconnecting things. And then you just got to turn it up so that it can't. Okay. And then what you got to do is, and so we got this little screw here. So we got to put this. This can be quite awkward. Okay. 
Yeah. Right, so it seems to have gone in. We're not going to make it too tight because we're going to test it. Alright, so now we've got that screwed in. Alright. Let's give it a test. This is nice and locked in position now. Okay. And this is all the way out, which means this bolt is going to, when you shoot the gun, it's not going to push back open like this. Just like that. So you can feel this has a positive click right here when it locks into place. So that's that part. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put this plate back on now that we know this is correct. Alright. Okay. So now we know that 100%. Now we can take these little guys off on this side. We're going to put the trigger right back in. All right, so now the trigger rod assembly. This will just slow it in. Okay. And The best way to actually do this is actually just to make sure that this splits, okay? And you guys can see there's like a little pin over there that's going to go through that little hole. So I'd say the best way to do this is to make sure that pin side is on the bottom here, okay? So what you do is you can get it under there. And then just hopefully push it on and it will click into place. Or not. Okay, so there it's in there. Perfect. Uh, and just like that. So I think what's important to do is you want to test this trigger before you reassemble it. So we just want to cock it to make sure that it's going to cock. Cocks is make sure if it fires and it releases. Cock and releases. Right, so now we can put this plate back on. Nice like that. Right. Again, we're going to just hand tighten these guys. Kind of once you get it down, just like a half of a butt. I found the best thing with air rifles is never to over tighten things. Just because what happens if you talk it down and you figure that oh you've got to go back and change something, and then the back and forth can do some damage. All right, so let's just test that again. Engages nicely, releases nicely, engages nicely, releases nicely. All right, another sign. So, there you have that part. Alright, next thing we we'll do is we want to put this barrel back. Okay, we just want to make sure we orientate it correctly. A bit of spray. Just want to feed this guy in here. And then just want to. Alright, so now that we have that incorrectly, we're going to take this nice big grub screw. I'm going to put that in. Okay. Okay. 
Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the shroud back on. Okay. Hopefully you guys can see this. And then this just let me just let's give it a bit of some all there. And then this will just thread right back on there. And then you're just gonna hand tighten this guy. You're not gonna just okay, just like that. So it's nice and snugged up now. And we just want to figure out what size these guys are. So what size. Okay, okay, and these guys are just gonna hand tighten. And we'll just snug them up. Half a turn. Okay, just like that. Alright, next thing, the scope rail back on. Just like that does. And then And then guys, the last thing we do is we're just going to put this bottle on. I'm going to do that, I'm just going to give it a little bit of spray around there, lube it up. Stand it off up, just like that. And I'll put it upside down, it's a bit easier. Alright. Alright guys, so that's how you disassemble and reassemble the Profit 2 and remove that annoying little valve that makes it squeak. I think the next thing we do is just head to the range and test it out. Alright, we're back at the range with the Profit 2. Uh, after we had our disassembly and uh, we removed that check valve. Now let's see how uh, it sounds and let's see how it shoots. Alright, let's see how it sounds without the check valve in it. Wow, totally awesome. So glad to get rid of that noise. Absolutely awesome. All right, we're loaded up with the JSP Jumbo Exact, the monster redesigns. Let's have those shoot. Wow guys, 
so much better. And the nice thing is like you don't really have to wait for the plenum to fill up now that the check valve has been removed. Absolutely, absolutely awesome. And the numbers were pretty good as well. I didn't see huge fluctuations in, in FPS, which is awesome. And accuracy, pretty damn good. Considering that big, that little red, well, the big circle, the big red circle down there is actually a one inch, group, one inch uh, circle at 85 yards. So very, very nice. Guys, please don't forget to like and subscribe and have a great day.